Hello my friends, welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims, Grizzly Bear Farms. Uh, we are on the Graceland map today. Uh, I believe the last video that I uh, produced for you all, we were on the Graceland map uh, where I uh, demonstrated uh, how to set up your um, uh, Logitech uh, G20, um, G27 in the Logitech joystick for uh, doing all sorts of uh, fun work with front-end loaders and such as that. Anyway, uh, today I wanted to introduce you uh, to the soil mod modification uh, that's very popular uh, for farming sim. Now this is going to be a different type of video so please don't tune me out just yet uh, because I'm sure you have seen uh, perhaps dozens of uh, YouTube videos that go into detail about what the soil mod is. Uh, some of these videos go into rather deep levels of detail. Uh, some are just uh, uh, fellow YouTubers who are uh, farming on their farm sim to, uh, to farm sim 15 games and using the soil mod and sometimes these guys will go into a little bit of detail as to what they're doing and why they're doing it but this video is going to be almost a step-by-step -step, uh, for you over the span of uh, initial uh, planting uh, well field prep initial planting the day-to-day -day maintenance of the fields up to the harvest and the harvest and we'll talk about the yield and how well we did Okay, and I'll throw, uh, throw some pitfalls and other things that you need to think about. And, but the primary purpose of this is to also introduce you to um, a few tools which I will provide links to uh, if you visit my website, uh, grizzlybearsims.com. Again, that's grizzlybearsims.com. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. That's my blog site. And I will link in the show notes to the specific blog article where I will be talking about the first days uh, farming adventures and such as we are starting to prep our field, uh, plan our field, and plant wheat today. Now, um, why soil mod? Well, basically, the default game as it comes, and of course, if you're not playing on a PC, uh, this video is going to be pretty much obsolete to you because uh, there are no mods uh, currently for any of the console platforms. But uh, why soil mod? So basically, the vanilla game for the PC, you really only have to worry about two things. The first thing being that you plant a field because you need to plant a field before you can ever expect anything to grow on that field. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Duh. Okay. Um, the second important thing is applying fertilizer if you want to increase the yield of those crops. You don't have to apply fertilizer. The game will grow uh, whatever crop you happen to plant. Again, we're talking about the vanilla or the default aspects of the game. It will grow wheat. It will grow barley, canola, uh, corn, potatoes, whatever the case may be. It will grow those particular crops without the need of fertilizer. If you add fertilizer to the field, and it doesn't really matter which kind, if you spread it uh, in, um, in powder form, uh, granular form, or if you spray it in liquid form, or if you use manure, compost, um, or even uh, liquid manure, um, it doesn't matter. It, it's going to treat it the same. It's going to increase the yield of the crop. So basically spreading any type of fertilizer is better than no fertilizer at all. And of course, that same theory can even be applied to your front lawn. Um, treating your front lawn with some type of fertilizer is going to be better than no fertilizer at all. Okay, so, but Soil Mod really takes this, uh, takes this game into a true simulator um, style of play where we have to worry about different things. We have to worry about the soil pH level. We have to worry about the, the soil humidity level. How, mu how much moisture is in the soil. We have to worry about how much, um, how, much how, how rich the soil is as far as nutrients both N and PK. We have to worry about weeds. We have to worry about um, 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 we have to worry about what the weather is going to do um, over the course of the next few days. So as we start to look at this, one of the things that really confused me about the soil mod was exactly when to do what and 
to, to, to ba essentially produce the best results, okay? And so there's not a lot of information out there on YouTube um, that really take you almost by the hand and show you this is what you do for day one, this is what you do for day two, this is what you do for day three, etc. So this video is going to do that Plus, I'm going to introduce you to a few tools that I use that helps me to basically keep track of what I've got going on. Okay? Simple enough. So let's get started. Let's, uh, we'll just go over here and we'll get in our nifty supply truck here and we'll go out to the field that we are planning on planting today. Okay, now this truck is a little squirrely. Uh, I'll try to keep it going in a straight line as best as possible. Uh, but I love this mod here. Uh, it's a supply truck and it actually works. You can deliver fuel, you can deliver fertilizer, you can deliver um, um, herbicide all out to, uh, to the field uh, where you're working without having to bring everything back in uh, to the supply points. Now, I have, I tried the soil mod uh, probably four months, five months ago, something like that. And I was at a point in my life where I was really busy with work and other endeavors, and I just didn't have the time to grasp its concepts and to really understand. And I failed miserably at it because, I, again, I just didn't understand um, some of the certain particular laws, if you will, that you must understand in order to basically use the soil mod and produce the best results from that. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and turn off our pickup. We'll step out and we'll walk onto the field here that uh, we are going to plant um, today. So this is really step one. This is this is so, this is sort of field preparation. Now this this field um, is my wheat field. It's it's the field that I typically always plant wheat on. Um, and um, I had harvested the wheat uh, two days ago, two game days ago. And um, so I did go ahead and um, cultivate the field after I planted it, or I'm sorry, after I harvested it and let the field rest for, for one day. Uh, it's not really required um, to do that, um, but it's just something that I typically do because that allows me to put a little bit of space or a little bit of buffer in my gameplay so that I can do other things. Because let me tell you, um, the soil mod is going to keep you busy. Um, I've got four fields currently that I'm working on this um, massive map. This, this map has um, uh, something like 30, uh, 30, 40 different fields on it, I think, uh, perhaps more. At, before I started playing with Soil Mod, I was uh, planting and harvesting uh, 10 fields, and I've had to drop that down to just four for right now as I go through the process of getting uh, my workflow uh, set up the way that I want it and get things going. Now, one of the things that I'm planning to maybe experiment with is the... Um, the, the modifying the growth cycle. So right now my growth cycle is set to essentially one day per growth cycle, which means that when I plant, from the time that I plant to the time that I harvest is, is basically four days. It's just four days after sowing is when I can harvest uh, wheat, barley, canola, etc. Potatoes, I believe, is one day extra. It's, it's five days. Um, but for um, those crops like wheat, barley, canola, etc. It's it's four days from the time that you harvest, or four days after after you sow. I'm sorry, I keep saying harvest. I meant sow. Um, so I'm I'm thinking about modifying this and changing this to like two days, which would essentially mean that it would be a total of eight game days between the time that you sow, between the time that you harvest, just to allow a little bit of extra buffer so that A, I can do more fields, uh, I can do a bigger variety of crops, and B, I can build in some of that buffer time so that I can do other things. I can do a little bit of forestry, I can I can spend more time tending to the animals, um, etc. I just feel like right now that every single day I'm having to do something to each of those four fields. I'm having to spray it because you've either got to spray water, you've got to spray fertilizer, you've got to put down lime, you've got to do something. So anyway, I know I'm, I'm get, maybe getting a little bit off course here because we are just really talking about day one stuff today. I, this will be a multi-part video. I will try to keep the episodes relatively short. Um, so 
essentially, without further ado, let's really get started on talking about what we need to do for this particular field. Now, once you enable the soil mod and get it working, and by the way, let me just say that the map needs to be soil mod ready before you can actually install the soil mod because it won't work properly. <clears throat> so there's a number of maps that are soil mod ready. Uh, one of those being um, states or Graceland uh, is basically soil mod ready. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to walk out into the field a good little ways and um, look at the, the HUD in the lower right hand corner. That will tell you uh, various different things about the condition of the particular soil that re is represented in this field. This is field number two uh, for those of you that may be familiar with the Graceland map. Now it's telling me that the soil pH is 7.1 which is neutral. It's telling me that the soil moisture is at 57% and it's telling me that the nutrients of N is times 5 and the nutrients of PK is times 4. Now if you know anything about um, the soil mod, uh, if you've done any reading about the soil mod whatsoever, you know that the optimum levels of moisture is 57%. The optimum level of nutrients uh, both N and PK is 5 and 4. So we are pretty much spot on as far as the soil moisture goes, as far as our nutrients in and PK. Our soil pH is a little bit elevated. Normal is 6.8, but at 7.1 the the yield loss or the, the, the loss that we could expect from a particular crop is, is relatively okay. I mean um, it starts to drop off at 7.5 on the high side or at 6.2 on the low side, but that's still only 90% or that's still giving you a 90% yield. So nothing really that I, that I think at this particular point in time with this field that I really want to worry about at this time. So one of the things that um, helped me was finding a couple of different tools out on the internet. The one that I'm going to introduce you to you first is, is sort of a calculator. It's an Excel spreadsheet that's on steroids um, and it really helps to help you understand what the current levels are versus what you can expect as um, as the days progress between the time that you prep the field, sow the field, and actually harvest the field. So I need to just do one thing here and I need to um, I need to tab out so that I can get control of my mouse. I can do monitor capture and I'm going to bring the spreadsheet into the frame. Okay, now again, I will link to the spreadsheet in the blog post, which you'll get the link of the blog post in the YouTube video down below. So this spreadsheet is multi has multi-language support. Um, it will do English and it will do uh, German. Um, so when you download the spreadsheet, uh, it will it will work in both Microsoft Office Excel as well as uh, Apache OpenOffice um, works just fine. Uh, the spreadsheet is locked. I haven't figured out how to maybe add additional tabs so that I could add a tab for each field. So that's part of the reason why I've gone with a little bit of a manual process on something that I'll show you just uh, momentarily. But anyway, we'll move this slightly out of the way. And again, I'll refer back to our soil conditions of 7.1, 57, 5, and 4. So we are going to plant wheat on this field. So we've just go in here and select from the list of, of uh, different fruit types. We will select wheat. Our pH is 7.1. I've already put that in. Our humidity or our soil moisture is 57%. Our N is at 5. Our PK is at 4. Okay, and we are at one day per growth cycle. I'm not going to change that through the course of this uh, video series, so don't worry about that. Um, our weather forecast, days above 22 degrees Celsius. All right, so let me move this out of the way again, and let's come back in here, and let's look at our weather overview. So here's the deal about farm sim weather. Well, it's much like real world weather. You know when the weather forecast tells you that 
Sunday, it's supposed to be nice and sunny and it's going to be a warm temperature and you wake up Sunday morning and it's raining and it's cold or maybe it's uh, the weather forecaster tells you that it's not going to be so hot but you wake up and it's a scorcher. Well, that's how the weather is in Farming Simulator. Um, it's very much unpredictable. It's very much uh, wait five minutes and it will change. The other problem is, is that again today, and we happen to be in day 11 of me uh, playing Graceland map, okay, but um, if, you, if you essentially close out a farming sim and um, save your progress and then relaunch farming sim, you may get a completely different weather forecast, okay? Today may show um, below 22 degrees. It may be 18 degrees. It may be uh, 24 degrees or whatever. Um, the only thing that I think is fairly static or fairly accurate from gameplay to gameplay or game save to game save is rain or the chance of rain. Now I believe that this is the icon for rain. Um, it's telling us that on Saturday or two days from now that we can expect rain. So back to our spreadsheet. So our spreadsheet asked us how many days we have above 22 degrees Celsius. So basically between now and harvest we've got um, we've got two days, okay? We've got two days um, of weather above 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I'm going to bring back our, um, our little trusty spreadsheet over here, and we're going to change this to two days. Now, I did this earlier this morning um, as just sort of a proof that things change, and it was only one day above 22. So I'm going to modify this to two days above 22. Now, there's still just the one day um, of rain, so I've got that set for one day of rain. Okay, now right now I don't have enough uh, slurry or enough manure to really worry about, um, and I don't have any compost, so I'm going to just sort of skip over the the green manure, which is basically if you've got the chopped straw in the field, um, or if you've got plants, if you like basically uh, just cultivate uh, plants into the ground. Since I don't have compound post, I don't have uh, manure from, or I don't have enough manure from my cows, and I don't have enough liquid manure from my cows, just going to skip those. So we're going to be using artificial uh, materials. Okay, so we've got our information plugged in at the top. Uh, we're going to come down here, and we're going to look at, we just immediately look at what our what our results are if we if we really don't do anything else. We're going to be at 6.5 pH, we're going to be at 43% humidity, which is a bit low, and we're going to be, our N level is going to be at 6, and our PK is going to be at 5. All right, so things have changed slightly from when I had originally set this up and prepared some of the uh, stuff that I'm going to be talking about. So we're going to make a modification here, and we're going to add one day of water because I think that is going to help bring our humidity up, okay? And it did. All right, so that, that's really to counterbalance this extra day of uh, uh, above 22 degrees Celsius. So we're going to expect to water one time. Uh, we're going to expect to use uh, in uh, fertilizer uh, one time and PK one time, both liquid. Uh, that will help to counterbalance the, um, the effects of, the, of the, warmer, the warmer daytime temperatures. We're also going to apply a double herbicide one time. And the end result should be, we should have a pH of 6.5, slightly low, but again, if we look at our scale, um, that is still less, it's somewhere between 90% um, and 100% yield on that. So we're still going to get 94.3% yield on that particular, on this particular field. And that's fine enough for me. Um, our humidity should end up being 57%. Our N should be 6, which is slightly higher, and our PK should be 5, which again is slightly higher. But again, uh, we're at 94.3. Maybe you will have better luck at zeroing these things in, but I'm going to tell you that everything that we're looking at today is 
potentially going to have to be thrown out of the window or certainly going to have to be modified as the days go by because as I said earlier when we look at this weather forecast if we go in and save our game and, and exit out the only thing that will probably be static or that probably will return is a chance of rain on Saturday and again it's just a chance of rain there's no guarantee that we're going to get any moisture out of this um, but these days of above of above uh, 22 degrees Celsius may very well change. It could possibly be that we get every single day is above 22 degrees Celsius. So we're really going to have to monitor our soil moisture conditions. Or it could be that we that this day is not 22 degrees Celsius, um, and um, you know this would be the last day before harvest. So it would be looking that we would be harvesting on uh, I believe on Monday. So um, we have to really watch that. So let's um, so let's again look at our spreadsheet and again I'll post this um, on my blog site and you can get access to this spreadsheet it's a it's a wonderful tool and I recommend that you download it now one of the things that I struggled with was how do I keep track of of all of this stuff I need like a I need like a diary if you will that that helps me understand what I'm doing and it's a bit of a paper process uh, but that's okay because you know I can print this off and I'll keep it for uh, four or five days I may actually put the form on both sides of the piece of paper that way um, oops that way um, um, that way I can I can keep track of everything so what I did here was I essentially took some information from the spreadsheet or from the factual uh, evidence of what's going on in the game. So I recorded our pH level is at 7.1, 57% moisture, N is 5, PK is 4, our weed factor is 0. We don't have any weed protection, but we also don't have any infestation, excuse me, any infestation at the moment. Our weather day is above 22 is 1 because, again, I did this before and I saved the game and I came back and it changed that. So we'll need to modify that on my sheet. Rain days is 1. That's, that's accurate. So essentially, um, I need to change the water here to be 1 because I'm planning on factoring in uh, one, day of, um, 1 day of water. Okay. And we're not going to use lime uh, because it's it's not really justified at this particular point in time. Uh, we can always we can always change that. We can always spread it um, after the fact if we need to. I don't know if that would be done in real life, um, putting lime on a on a field that's already been planted. But the game doesn't penalize you for doing that. But I do try to do things as uh, as 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 realistic as possible. So I will actually look into that, and I may uh, mention that in a, a upcoming video. Um, we also are planning on doing one dose of N, one dose of PK both liquid to counterbalance the days above 22 just helps put more liquid into the soil and we're going to do a herbicide we're going to do a double dose of C now one thing about herbicide and again as you kind of get to know the the soil mod you're going to know that certain crop types cannot be a you know it's not a magic solution there's not just one type of herbicide there's herbicide A herbicide B and herbicide C and then there's double doses of each of those three potions if you will. Um, wheat cannot take herbicide A. If you put A on um, a wheat field it's going to stop the growth or it's going to basically kill it. So but it will work with double with B or C so we're actually going to put a double dose on it which essentially gives us uh, essentially three days of uh, herbicide coverage, herbicide protection on our on our plant so for for day one what we're going to be looking at doing is we're going to seed uh, we're going to apply the herbicide we're going to apply a double dose of herbicide C onto this particular field now again this sheet I will um, I will show you this piece of paper uh, scanned in of course each time that we do the video uh, so after I complete today's uh, because we basically are doing our field prep or our, our, our planning on the same day that we're actually going to sow uh, so this information will come down here and, 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 and be a duplicate so day 11 will, will appear down here as well uh, there may be a, a reason why that let's say for example your your nutrient levels were really low and before you wanted to sow you wanted to go ahead and try to build bring the field up to a higher nutrient level so you might do field prep 
uh, a day or two in advance of actually putting any any seeds in the ground just to, to bring the field up maybe lower the pH increase the pH uh, maybe the field is infested with weeds or something like that so there there, there could be a reason why your farming sim day might be 11 here and might be 12 or 13 on the day that sh that you actually plant because again you're you're going to um, um, try to uh, counteract uh, poor soil conditions but I think our soil soil conditions as I understand the soil mod is actually pretty darn good as we currently set uh, on this particular day again day 11 so what we're gonna do is let me just move this out of the way and let me go in here and turn off monitor capture because I think that messes with my frames just a little bit. We'll get back into the game. We're going to get back into our um, our pickup here. We're going to fire this up. We're going to head back to the main farm and pick up our tractor and our cedar and then bring it out here to this particular field. So if you're interested in this supply truck, if you're interested in any of the mods that you see, um, let me get on the correct side of the road here. Um, I maintain a mod spreadsheet. Again, you can find that um, on my website, grizzlybearsims.com. Grizzly Again, grizzlybearsims.com. It's my blog site that I blog about all the various simulation-based games that I play. I play a number of them. Uh, flight sim, farm sim, truck sim, both Euro truck and um, uh, American truck. And um, so I document a lot of uh, mod reviews and other things in blog format. Don't do a lot of videos, but sometimes sometimes you just need to do a video that um, uh, to, to better illustrate what it is that you know you're, what it is that you're talking about. So I left unfortunately, I left the the yard just a little bit in a state of uh, disarray. Um, still trying to get some of the other fields cleaned up and um, work those into the workflow. So we're just going to come over here to our tractor uh, fertilizer cedar. This is the air uh, air cedar, uh, and this is a complete John Deere uh, kit. Pretty nice John Deere model as well. Uh, I got the uh, the tractor on um, American. What is it? American mod. American modders or something like that so anyway I think all of this came from American uh, American modders site but you can get the link to uh, all of this in uh, on that spreadsheet so let me just um, let me just do one thing because this tractor is a little bit loud let me just um, turn the volume down just slightly okay and, and and while I'm here let me talk about plant growth and plant withering um, the soil mod modification when you install it in the game it takes control of plant growth and plant withering so regardless of what you try to do here in the game settings it's not going to have an effect if you think that you can override plant withering for example which would occur um, I think uh, two to three days after uh, the final growth stage it's not going to work uh, your plants are going to wither they're going to die and it's going to upset you possibly also the plant growth again you can't modify that we're we're set on one day uh, per uh, per growth cycle uh, so changing this going to slow or uh, normal or fast or whatever is not going to have any effect on the game whatsoever so um, there you go all right so one thing that we need to sort of understand about how we uh, address our refilling of our fertilizer and our seeds is that you cannot change the fertilized type out away from a fertilized uh, distribution point okay or a supply point so here we are we're parked at at uh, our, our fertilizer and our seed distribution supply point and we're going to want to set this up for what we for what we actually want to plant with now if we were to go out there right now and start planting seeds they would actually die because remember what I said earlier about the herbicide level of AA that's not good so um, let me just look back at my notes just for a second so we are going to do CC so we're going to change this to CC and we're going to go ahead and refill um, our spreader um, sprayer if you will so it's basically refilling 
the tank that handles the herbicide. And then we're going to need to actually pull up just a little bit. Actually, I'm a little bit too close. And we need to change our selection on our tractor and we're going to go ahead and refill our seeds. And I'll just quickly show you as we pull away from our fertilize and seed distribution point. We'll just slow down right here and stop. Um, I can change back to you and I can show what type of herbicide we'll be spraying. But if I use the O key and try to change that, it tells me the switch spray type implement needs to be near the fertilizer tank. So uh, if I were to have made a mistake and realized that, oh boy, um, I wanted to apply um, nutrients in or MPK or PK, or uh, even God forbid that I had selected the wrong herbicide type, I would have to drive back to a um, fertilizer tank somewhere on the farm. I could even be that pickup. Uh, that I was just driving that supply truck uh, because that works as well and then change that uh, change that type so we're going to just go ahead and head over here to the field and get ready to seed this in wheat with the herbicide type of AA hopefully I don't hang up on that light pole we'll just drive over here now I'll get the, the tractor and seeder um, started on the field and then I'm gonna and then I'm basically gonna cut the video and then come back because we're already pushing over 30 minutes uh, on this and I did not want to uh, did not want these to be uh, very long and so I also have a lot of other things that I need to do on the farm while this uh, seeds this so I'm going to let course play uh, do this for us so this is field two and I should have a seed option here so we've got that in here I'll just go in here and put four-wheel drive and I don't think I need to do any of these other things this truck this tractor needs to be set on fertilizing seeding and there we go so I think that's got it set And we'll do drive course and he'll pull up and then stop and he will unfold and he'll start seeding this field in wheat and also applying the double C uh, herbicide to protect against uh, weed infestation and such. So I will go ahead and cut the video short or cut the video right here and then I will come back after we have seeded this field and talk about the next steps for both today as well as what our steps are should be for tomorrow if the weather continues to hold as it uh, is forecasted for right now. See you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back. Now, through the magic uh, of editing, you were only gone for just a few split seconds, but we are back in field number two, which is our uh, which is our wheat field has been planted. Um, our planter did a wonderful job uh, getting that done. And just to sort of recap uh, what it was that we did, let me just bring our um, our paper over here so that you can see that. So basically, I modified the water uh, to include one because of the uh, the change in the weather that um, experienced between uh, game saves and, and restarting restarting the game uh, that I did before I started recording earlier. So we had pH levels of uh, 7.1, 57% uh, moisture, N5, uh, PK4. At that particular point in time before seeding, we had no uh, weed infestation and we also had no weed prevention. Um, the, uh, the spreadsheet did suggest that we would need, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we would have two days above 22 degrees Celsius I need to change that on my sheet and one rain day so it in it uh, suggested that we water once uh, we would need uh, one uh, liquid dose of N one liquid dose of, of PK 
and then we would treat with a double uh, uh, herbicide of CC one time. So this is what we did was our just sown stage, which is day 11, the same day that we uh, initially took a look at our field. Our pH level is 7.1, our moisture is 57%, our N level is 5, our PK is 4, our weed prevention is now at 3 days with herbicide level C, and we applied that. So what I did is I just keep a, a highlighter near my, near my desk, and I just sort of mark off what I've done, and I'm complete. So basically... Um, at this particular point in time, field number two is complete for day 11, the day that we're uh, currently farming here, and we will revisit um, on day 12, and I'll bring you back in for a second video, and we'll look at what the soil conditions are, what the pH level is, uh, what our nutrients level N and PK are, and adjust what we need to do f uh, going forward. Um, now today is um uh is like i said a relatively warm day let me just move this out of the way uh, so i can bring up the weather forecast here again uh, it's going to be 28 degrees celsius today uh, what i will do is to prevent this from uh, skewing at least today's forecast is i will go ahead and finish up the work that i need to do on the farm i'll speed up um, through the through the evening uh, and to tomorrow morning, which would be game day 11, so that we do have this effect of this uh, of this 28 degrees Celsius. If I if I cut it now and then restart um, at some other later stage and then fast forward, it it may be different. So I at least want the weather to hold true for what it's predicted and forecasted to be today. Now before I move uh, forward, uh, I did want to just say one thing. Um, about um, spreading you know, chemicals and um, and such. So essentially, um, you know, we have we have some more things that we need to do. Obviously, day 12, day 13, day 14. Uh, if the weather hold tr holds true and we see that our soil moisture is a bit low tomorrow, uh, we will probably go ahead and apply one of our um, doses of N or one of our doses of PK, or maybe we'll just spray uh, uh, plain water on the field. But um, one thing about as far as the limitations are concerned with the soil mod and how it could potentially damage the crops is you cannot apply uh, herbicide and fertilizer within the same uh, within the same game day or within the same the same day growth growth period so we're okay with that because we're not going to do anything else to this field today if we if if we did find that our moisture was a bit low today we would probably just go ahead and apply uh, plain water to our field uh, tomorrow again we will look at what our uh, what our soil conditions are tomorrow and then and plan accordingly more than likely it will be to spray either an N or a, or a PK uh, or maybe water on the field and see how that goes as we continue through the week. Again, there's no guarantees. There's nothing that, that says that if we continue through what our spreadsheet told us that we will end up with these with these perfect numbers of what it had indicated that it would be um, Six, uh, six, five, five, seven, uh, six, and five. There's no guarantees if, if the if the weather uh, changes, if it's if it's more, if it's hotter than it uh, is forecast to be, then obviously that's going to have an effect on our soil moisture. If it's uh, cooler than it's expected to be, that will in turn have an effect on soil moisture, um, etc. If we get a lot of rain, obviously you get the point. So I'm going to go ahead and say thank you for watching, and uh, again, please check my website grizzlybearsims.com again that's grizzlybearsims.com uh, for a list of the or for the links for the spreadsheet as well as I will also post a link where you can uh, access this document on uh, Google Docs and you can uh, print that off make any changes that you want to want to do I mean there's no perfect science to this it's whatever whatever works for you whatever sort of workflow uh, that is going to work for you and like I said before I've got four fields currently and I've got to go and tend to those other fields they will require fertilizer one of them requires water um, and yet uh, the fourth one needs to be harvested so I'm actually in the middle of harvesting barley uh, as we speak so anyway thank you for 
for tuning in. Again, check out the website, grizzlybearsims.com, grizzlybearsims.com. You'll find a link to all the mods that I use uh, for uh, Farming Simulator as well as ETS2, ATS, uh, Flight Sim, etc. So thanks for watching, and I will see you with Part 2 where we will pick up on Day 12 and see what we need to do to our wheat uh, crop to keep that productive and uh, keep the yield as high as possible. Thank you.